This is the second devotional for Wednesday, January the 19th. The title of this devotional is The Sins and Signs of a Failing Nation and a Dying Culture. Now, this is part two of today's devotional. It's taken from Isaiah chapter 3. I invite you to study the Word of God. Don't just follow this devotional. Of course, all of these devotionals are written and recorded in heartofashepherd.com. Well, let's look at Isaiah chapter 3 today. Now, the, the Bible is filled with examples of godly men who did not have the luxury of ignoring the wickedness and perversity of their leaders and nation. Zechariah was stoned to death when he condemned the sins of Judah and her king in 2 Chronicles 24. When God commanded Jonah to go to Nineveh and warn that wicked nation, he tried to flee. And yet God demanded that he go and preach to that city, except they repent, the city of Nineveh would be destroyed. John the Baptist lost his head when he dared confront the wickedness and adultery of King Herod. And so we come to Isaiah, whom God called to assail the wickedness of Judah and her kings. Now notice with me in Isaiah chapter 3, and this will take a little bit of uh, interpretation for you. In Isaiah chapter 3 and verses 1 through 4, we have in the first four verses what I'm describing as the removal of the stay, S-T-A-Y, and the staff, S-T-A-F-F. Now, a study of history reveals the rise and fall of nations follows the pattern of sin and wickedness that we find in Isaiah chapter 3. We read in chapter uh, verse 1 of Isaiah 3, For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff. Now, to understand this verse, uh, you need to grasp what the meaning of the stay and the staff is. For it was intent that God was removing the leaders of the nation. The stay, S-T-A-Y, in the original Hebrew, is in a masculine form, meaning uh, to support or to protect. And so it represents Judah's loss of what I'm going to describe as manly men, men who were supporters, men who were protectors. And so part of God's judgment was to remove strong leaders in Judah, the manly men. Now, the staff that's found in verse 1 is a feminine form, also meaning support. And so God was not only going to remove the manly men who were leaders, but God was also going to remove those godly women who were influential in the greatness of Judah. And so Judah's rebellion, as we read chapter 3, rebellion against God was inviting his judgment And we find the losses enumerated in Isaiah chapter 3. What happens to a nation when it rejects God, his law, and his commandments? Well, verse 1, we've already seen the strong leaders are removed. But we also see in verse 1 the stay of bread and the whole stay of water. In, In other words, bread and water, famine, drought. The nation would, as we read in verse 2, would want for male leaders, men of integrity. The loss in Judah was tremendous, for they would have no mighty men, no men of war. The judge, the prophet, the prudent, the ancient, were all going to be lost. There was a second tier of leadership that was the very backbone of the nation that would also be lost as God judged that nation. In verse 4, we see the description that the captain of 50, that is the lower military men, honorable men, men of integrity, the counselors, the wise men, cunning uh, artificers, uh, that is uh, skilled workers and carpenters and even mechanics, would all be gone and the eloquent orator, the persuasive speakers, all gone. Do you see a parallel to our day? Consider then, who would take the place of those leaders. Who would fill the void when there are no more manly men, strong leaders, no more godly women? Who would fill that void? 
And the answer to that is in Judah, ch or Isaiah chapter 3 and verses 4 through 6. Judah would turn to weak, incompetent men for her leaders. With a void of, of spiritual manly men leaders, in verses 7 through 9, the people turned to foolish, inexperienced leaders, dominated in verse 12 by brazen women. In verse 4, the people would choose children, that is, weak, to be their princes, to be their leaders. Babes, immature, inexperienced, to rule, to have dominion over them. Well, with weak, inexperienced, and unprincipled leaders, Judah became a lawless and oppressed society. Those weak leaders were proud and emboldened against the ancient, the elderly, and the base against the honorable men. That is, those that had no moral compass rose up against the men of rank, honorable men. Well, verse 6, we ask the question, how did these weak, spineless, effeminate leaders come to be in authority? You see, they were not chosen because of their character, but according to verse 6, they were chosen because of their influence, having acquired wealth by inheritance. In other words, they were not self-made men. These were men that had, by either inheritance or guile, inherited their positions of power. In verse 12 and then verses 16 through 23, you'll also notice that in the absence of manly men leaders and godly women, Judah also turned to domineering women for its leaders. Verse 12, here's the description. Instead of nurturing and protecting the youth of the nation, women diminished their femininity and became worse brutes than even the men. Verse 12, women rule over them, which lead thee cause thee to error, and they destroy the way of the past. The women of the nation identified as the daughters of Zion are described in verse 16 as proud and immodest. In verse 16 again, they're haughty, they're flirtatious with wanton or painted eyes. Here's a closing thought for you. Like most nations that fail, Judah was destroyed, not from an enemy without, but from an enemy within. What became, becomes of a nation that chooses weak men and proud women to lead? Well, the strong women would be afflicted with disease eventually, verse 17. They would be reduced to the poverty of a household slave, verses 18 through 24. Their fine jury, 18 through 21, the costly apparel would be taken from them, and their well-groomed hair would be replaced by baldness. Wow, what a disgrace. When a nation rejects God, His law, His commandments, and they turn from good leaders, and God removes manly men leaders and godly women, they're left with this. And yet, in spite of all that, there was still hope. While the majority of Judah had turned to wickedness, not all were faithless. And we find in the closing verses that God promised He would not forget the righteous, and he would avenge his people. I close with a question. Do the signs of a dying nation sound familiar to you? They do to me. We, God's people, need to be bold in our faith, being the light and the salt God has called us to be, and confront a godless, dying society. Thank you for joining me today. Bye-bye.